our educational topic for today is going to be strategies to reduce hay waste. Charles is a field specialist in agricultural engineering based in Lincoln County. I just kind of pulled some numbers together here to give you a perspective of what that hay is worth and when it hits the ground in a bale out in the field. And uh, nutrients, I mean, have this labeled as fescue. I mean, uh, I think it, any cool season grass, uh, you kind of fall into those um, numbers there. And I, I kind of lumped all the nutrients of nitrogen, phosphorus, and, and potassium together and, uh, and it made an assumption of about 35 cents a unit uh, for the nutrients. So, so we've got a, a nutrient value or, or soil nutrient value of about $35 per ton. Uh, when we're talking about value of, of hay. And then I, uh, on the right there, I just want to highlight our, our extension guide sheet on custom rates that we um, have. If, if you're in need of that, it's, it's online. And uh, I, I use that $25 uh, per bale number that is you know, survey data that we've collected. And so that adds another $33 per ton uh, to that. So I, I've kind of come up with a rough ballpark number there of, of $68 per ton that that hay is, is worth or, or you've got into it uh, in, in that uh, product when it comes out of the baler. Uh, one, one thing is kind of curious with the custom rates is uh, between the uh, you know, four by five and, and five by six is the, the, the survey data just shows a you know, $5 increase in, in custom costs. So, you know, Maybe if you're looking at getting some custom hay bale, uh, go, go with the bigger package and, and maybe reduce some costs that way. So that was just kind of an idea of how much um, I tied up that before we haul it off the field and, and store it. And if we're looking at outside storage, uh, you know, these are some uh, kind of some uh, diagram here of, of uh, how we have losses there if we're storing outside, you know, the less dense, you know, it's going to you know, settle or, or squat, that's going to be more damage. When we're under trees, we're creating a, like a micro environment there of, of humidity, uh, resulting in more damage. Uh, you know, flat ground that uh, ponds water does not drain well is, is going to cause more, more damage. Uh, and then even if we got the, you know, the bales touching, uh, they're going to result in, in moisture migration, uh, moisture uh, there causing more damage. And, and even with the smaller diameter bales, uh, we're going to have uh, more damage there. I just want to touch on this slide real, you know, real quickly on that last comment on if we look at a um, bale diameter, and uh, I think uh, Jim touched on this last week, uh, you know, real well, Jim Humphrey. And so when we look at the, if we got six uh, inches of uh, spoilage there, in, in a five foot diameter uh, bale, we've got, you know, 30, 36 percent uh, uh, waste. I mean, if it's just a four foot uh, diameter bale, we're up to that 44 uh, percent. So if we're going to be storing something outside, uh, you know, you know, if, if that's what we're forced into, uh, you know, a larger diameter bale, you know, might assist in reducing that um, that spoilage. I mean, if we just if we're if we're um, at the four foot diameter, you know, two inches of spoilage, we're at 16% and, and five foot diameter, we're at 13%. Now we'll go, kind of get into some of the, the, the topic of the day uh, of feeding uh, waste reduction. This is uh, pulled from our, our hay production, our hay school uh, curriculum. And um, some of the data is showing that some typical uh, feed waste is, is up in that 30%. Uh, 30% area. And, you know, when I quoted, you know, 60 to $70 per ton in waste, that's going to turn into, uh, you know, considerable amount of money that uh, is being wasted out there. And um, we're really kind of targeting getting down to that eight to 10%, uh, you know, waste area uh, is more of uh, an area that we need to be. So that essentially leaves, you know, 20% of your cost uh, can be shaved off you know, if you're right now in that existing, you know, 30% area. So you got to look at what your uh, current practices are. I mean, this is, you know, a picture I took out of the uh, curriculum and, uh, you know, it's just showing kind of, I guess, the, um, the extreme, I guess, as far as waste. We've got, you know, a pile of hay there and, and your cows are just kind of standing in it and, and uh, you know, we've got manure piled in it and, you know, probably bedding in it. So, a lot of that is going to waste and not being consumed by the cattle. Uh, this is some um, 
data, early data from um, Spearman Station uh, back in 1973, you know, when large round bales were just, you know, starting to hit the market. And they were just comparing, you know, um, small square bales, you know, in a ring, uh, the large round bales, uh, we put those in a ring and we had a little bit more uh, waste uh, increase there, not a whole lot. But I think the, the message here is just showing what, what the ring is doing is, is taking us from, uh, you know, a large bale, you know, unrolled out there at the 45% waste. Uh, we're kind of the extreme in there. Uh, just by putting it in that ring, we've reduced that down to, to you know, that nine or 10% area. So several factors that can contribute uh, to that. Um, you know, one of these would be uh, feeder sizing, uh, kind of match your, your feeder to, you know, the capacity of the herd. So we've got uh, feeding space for all those cows. Uh, I know we've got, you know, a lot of herds in the state where, where people are working and they want to size their, you know, they want to do their feeding you know, once or twice a week, uh, kind of scheduling uh, cattle feeding around uh, other work tasks and things like that. And sometimes that can kind of contribute to, uh, to the waste issue also. You know, aggressive animals, you know, within the herd uh, are just going to take away those feeding slots from other animals. So uh, we'll maybe look at, uh, you know, what's going on within the herd dynamics as far as uh, are all those animals able to, to get up and feed when they need to? Or are they being, are the, the shy ones uh, kind of losing condition and not uh, kind of eating the leftovers, uh, so to speak? So let's kind of look at the herd dynamics of, of got some animals there creating the problem. You know, elevated surface, you know, maybe more so for uh, other health of the animals, uh, foot and uh, hoof health, uh, you know, then um, maybe the feeding, but, you know, it's also a good practice to have elevated so we're not, uh, you know, dealing with, you know, a lot of mud conditions there. And then also, um, you know, make sure they um, clean up the majority of the feed before adding more of the feeder. You know, this, uh, this slide here is kind of similar to the earlier one, with you know, just a hay out in a lot. I mean, uh, we all uh, probably have gotten to this point, uh, late, late winter, early spring, where uh, things have become a muddy mess and we're trying to uh, keep cattle off of other areas. But, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we can say keep it as dry as possible, but there are times when that just becomes a, a real big challenge. But, you know, some maybe a little more planning or, or some type of development can, can help minimize that. I'm going to just kind of touch on some data as far as uh, feeder styles and, and maybe access. This is some uh, data talking about two different feeders that, you know, comb feeder and then, you know, open ring. And then they also, you know, had uh, access times of, of 8, 16, and 24 hours, you know, per day. And kind of the take home message here, I'm sure Eric can add if we need to as far as the intake here, but uh, um, on, on the cone feeder, you know, um, we didn't see, a, you know, you did see a reduction, you know, from uh, having access or, you know, 24 compared to the 16. But if you look at the open um, feeder style, uh, when the cows had um, unlimited access to it, it did increase some of the waste uh, of the hay there. This is uh, another look at some of that, you know, data there, um, you know, again, uh, limiting access to the to the hay can uh, can reduce uh, the waste uh, percentage. Uh, you just see there, um, you know, it also can uh, kind of affect milk production in, in a small manner there on that slide. But uh, you know, if you can ac you know limit access or how many hours a day they have to that, that might help with uh, the reduction of waste in the hay. Different feeding methods here. Um, we look at uh, you know small squares. Uh, we put out a you know with a rack. We we you know like I said when we're looking if we've got uh, off farm income or jobs, um, you know we can increase uh, waste when we're putting out multiple days of supply there, uh, either with uh, small squares or uh, large round. Uh, and then also I mean if we want to look at the extreme here of uh, you know one day supply or seven day supply. Uh, without a rack, I mean, if we're we're feeding just uh, hay out in a uh, a lot or a pasture, giving them a day, you know, a week's worth of a hay for that week, uh, we're essentially throwing about half of that away as far as being wasted there. 
it's just a uh, you know small uh, schematic here, kind of showing um, reduction as we uh, go from these different styles of, of feeders, from an open ring to uh, you know the the solid bottom rings to the cone style. Uh, we're we're making a step you know in the right direction as far as feed waste with with uh, going from one of those to the other. Uh, if we look at some of uh, the data from uh, Justin Sexton uh, in 2013. You know, the first two here is showing about the you know, 20 percent uh, feed waste uh, reduction uh, down to about 13, uh, you know, with this with the solid uh, lower part of the ring. And then with the uh, cone feeder uh, having a reduction, you know, even further. Some other areas I'm just going to touch on that might be used, uh, you know, as far as if you're if you're unrolling hay. Uh, if you do have some aggressive cows, you know, that can kind of space them away from the more timid or shy ones so they're able to eat. Uh, you're, you're spreading out your feeding area. Uh, so that's kind of minimizing the footprint of the, of the feeding area. Um, you can kind of portion the bales. Uh, you can kind of do somewhat of a, of a seeding method with some of the seed bank in that, in that hay. And also it's distributing, you know, the manure uh, out onto the field. Uh, rather than being bottled up into a smaller uh, dry lot. Some bale processors, uh, you know, might increase the uh, consumption of low and medium quality forages. Uh, you might be able to combine uh, different forages together to maybe make a better product. And uh, also maybe a, a way to dilute some, some issues you may have with the, uh, with the forages. And then, uh, you know, the con to that is, uh, you know, it may decrease uh, the, you know, the quality on a windy day or, you know, leaf loss or, you know, destruction of some of the more finer um, forage in that, uh, you know, decreased uh, room and retention, uh, maybe that results in the increased intake. And then just simply ownership cost of a, you know, 20 to $25,000 piece of equipment, you know, compared to, uh, to a regular hay ring, uh, this cost is pretty minimal. I'm going to end here with uh, you know this is a uh, a um, a uh, website uh, from um, Noble Research Institute now they're called where you can do a uh, waste calculator um, and I'm going to try Eric to uh, it, what you're able to do do an input up here of your existing uh, cost and then it's going to give you um, kind of an evaluation of where you're at with that we're just going to do a quick here. Um, we're, let's just compare it to a uh, open bodied steel ring. Uh, these are existing. Our um, cost of the bale, I'm just gonna put in you know, $40. Uh, the weight of the bale, we'll just go with 1,500 pounds. Uh, number of bales fed per month, I'm just going to uh, put in maybe 15. Let's just put in 12. Number of months hay is fed. Uh, we'll just let's just say three, and then what it is done, it'll do is um, calculate. Then it calculates, you know, the value of your hay per pound, which you already put in there. Number of bales per year. Uh, it's calculating a waste of of twenty percent with using their data. So it's uh, comes down to, um, you know, this number right here. Uh, you know, it's saying there's about $300 uh, worth of, of hay that was wasted um, with, that, with that type of feeder. So if I go up and just change that to the, um, to the cone, and I, I leave all that other uh, there together, it is calculating. I, I've reduced that waste down to about, you know, $75 for that same for those same parameters uh, with that. So I think it's, you know, I, I wouldn't take, you know, basically stock that we're down to the penny with that, but I think it's a good uh, learning tool to um, kind of look at some of the different methods I'm doing, um, how often I'm feeding, that type of thing. How exactly does a sheeted ring reduce waste? In my perspective, it, it prevents stuff from just being pulled out of the bottom and just kind of left laying there on the ground. Or you know, are sloughing off, I guess. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's just in terms of hay that gets kicked out from underneath the 
you know, from the bottom half of the bale, it, it reduces the amount of area that, that hay can fall out, out of the bale and out of the ring. And it, you know, just ends up reducing the amount of uh, hay that gets turned into bedding. You know, I, I've always thought that one of the most economical things that a producer could do um, for reducing hay waste is to, and this is kind of a crude way of saying it, but put a skirt around the bottom of their open ring feeders to, to help reduce the amount of that hay that ends up as bedding.